Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So behind me I got a Jeep Cherokee and the issue that this customer is having is the rear electronic parking brake will not release. Now this is somewhat of a common issue that I ran into more than once or twice. So let me show you guys what's going on here. So now we're inside the Jeep and we have it started up and if you guys will notice right here, you have your parking brake symbol and it says service parking brake. Now what is very common on this is this switch, which is a parking brake switch, tends to go bad. Now the reason why it tends to go bad is if you guys pay attention to it, it's fairly close to the cup holder and people have, a, let's just say, a tendency to spill stuff and it normally gets all over the switch. Now I went ahead and I tested the switch, everything is dead in here. I got fault codes for this switch inside the system and it's also telling me the computer has a malfunction. What happens is when water or soda or anything gets in here, it'll cause a short and it'll throw those codes. And if you guys can see, this switch is supposed to light up when the car is on. We have no light up action going on here. So we're going to go ahead and replace this switch now. We got our new switch already here. As you guys can see, they kind of updated it and they tell you you got to pull it to activate it and push it to release it is how they want you to do it. Now the first step in this is let me go ahead and turn off this car because it's starting to fume up the shop. What you're going to want to do and the way I do it is you want to take off this whole centerpiece according to Chrysler. I just don't do that, guys. I take my knife and I gently get in here in the corner. Now, you can do this with your plastic wedging tools, but they give you enough gap that it won't actually damage anything. Once you pop up your panel, guys, you'll see that there's one connector there. It has a little lock tab. What you want to do, and see if I do this one-handed, is you want to push the lock tab down and just kind of get the connector off. I know I made it look easy. This one, for some reason, came off fairly simple. Um, maybe this lock is broken. No, it works. It just, I guess, since inside the car, it doesn't really exhibit anything. So that's pretty good. And now the only other thing that you want to do, and it's kind of hard. I cannot show you guys because I can't fit you in there. But I'll show you on the new switch. If you guys look at it, you see these little holes there. There's going to be two screws, one on each side, that hold it into place. They are right here and right here. So I'm going to go ahead and get those off with a little short screwdriver and I'll be back once I have it replaced. Okay guys, so we got our old switch out and it's currently right here. Now, it's not regular screws that hold it in. What you're going to want to do is have a T20 Torx bit. I use this little quarter inch ratchet I got in there. I was able to remove it and put it back on. Once you do that, you just bolt it back up. Then you're going to want to take your connector and let me see if I could do this one handed on camera with you guys. Uh, if it gives me the correct angle here, I might have to switch hands. So you're going to want to just snap that in and make sure you put your lock back up. Once you have the connector plugged in, guys, what you're going to want to do is just kind of snap this back into place. Uh, it just goes in just like that. You don't need a lot of pressure. What we're going to want to do next, guys, is you're going to go ahead and start the car. Now, it should clear itself out fairly easily. And if you guys notice right here in the corner, there is no light, no brake light or anything on anymore. And then what we're going to do is go up here to our switch and we're going to go ahead and activate it. And our brake is set. If you guys can see it right there, it says brake. And then we go back down here, we're going to push it in and it deactivates. And if you guys look at that, it's gone. So right now our car should move once we put it in drive. Everything is released. It should be rolling and moving fairly easy. And that's basically how you take care of this issue on these Jeeps, guys. All right, guys, and that is how you replace a parking brake switch on a Jeep Cherokee. It's fairly simple. If you guys have that issue where the brake isn't releasing, like I said, most of the time it's the switch. Sometimes it can be something more, so you always want to do your checks. But in this case, we scanned it, we knew the switch was bad, and that's how you replace it. Uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Hopefully it helped some of you guys out. With that said, please comment, like, and subscribe. It'll definitely help my channel grow. And I just want to say have a great day, guys, and I'll catch you guys on the next repair.